In this video, I will give you five tips to avoid future problems in your data analysis workflows. Hi, this is Genomics Bootcamp, and this might be the most important video on the channel so far, so watch till the end. Also, there might be a bonus content for those who are patient. So recently I sit down and put together five points that from my experience are really important to do when you are doing an anal data analysis of any kind. They are not intended to be in order of importance, but still I put the most important advice as the first one. So even if you just watch this one single advice, you still got the most important information and you can leave afterwards. Just joking, don't leave. Okay, so number one, you need to back up all your stuff all the time. This might be an obvious advice and you can say, oh, I'm already doing it. But I see so many people losing so many important information, scripts and papers and writings, just because they have not done proper backup of your, their materials. But there are different forms of backup and some are better than the others. Let's say you are saving your important files on a USB stick. This is one of the worst things you can do. Of course, saving it on a USB stick is better than nothing. But when you realize how easy it is to lose a USB stick or overwrite things on it, or how easily can it get corrupted, well, then you are suddenly not so sure about the safety of your most important files anymore. At that point, it's maybe even better to have them in a computer, in a separate folder, somewhere safe. But of course, computers can also get lost and broken and uh, all kinds of stuff can happen to it. So my advice is to use cloud storage. Most of the time, the stuff you really care about is pretty small. So there are script files, maybe papers you write or some kind of proposals. And these are some really small files into which you put a lot of effort and a lot of your time. So they are immensely valuable. So even if you go for any free cloud storage option, you can be sure that your files will be there for you. One additional tip here is to minimize the need of any manual move of the files. So I just suggest you to create your working directories with your script files or you the files you care about directly on the cloud storage space on your computer. Tip number two, store your files on the appropriate place on your hard disk. Again, there are some places on, the, on your hard disk that are better than the others. The worst place you can store files is on your desktop. Yet I see many, many people doing it for some unknown reason. Well, I actually, I know why people are doing it because well, it's convenient, easy to put things there. And if you switch on your computer, you find your files easily. But there you could get the desktop overcrowded in no time. That's one thing. And it's extremely easy to delete something from your desktop, even if you don't want uh, it to get deleted. Or if any of you have children, nephews, nieces, or any other smaller children running around your computers, you might have the experience that they can cause a great havoc when they touch anything on the computer. And the first place they mess up is the desktop. So you don't want your most important files sitting around exposed to such mischief. So you should place them somewhere else on the computer. Now, if you can choose and you have a C and a D drive, I would opt for the D drive because if something happens to the system, which happens to be on the C drive, this is the one that goes down first. If your stuff is on the D drive, it has a better chances of survival, even if the operating system needs to be reinstalled. Tip number three. Use separate folders for separate projects. To be honest, most of us work on more stuff at the same time. Yet I have seen a bunch of people who tend to put everything in one folder because that is where the data are, that is where the software is installed. So basically they just put everything in one place. This seems to be a convenient solution because, well, 
you don't have to look for your stuff because everything is in just in one folder. But after a short time, what you will get there is a bunch of files and frankly, just a great chaos. So if you have a separate project, put it in a separate folder so you have a better overview what is going on in each project individually. Also, what you can do is folders within folders. For example, you have the data, which can be in a folder called data. Or your script files could be in a separate directory so they don't get deleted unintentionally with other temporary files. That's it for the third one, just well, create more folders. Number four, use appropriate naming conventions and don't use spaces in file names and folder names. Well, there are actually two things you should take care about at this point. The first one is that your file names or folder names should be descriptive. So just by looking at the file name, you should know exactly what is in them. That is because if you look for this file in the future, a file name, for example, like results.txt tells you nothing. So there should be additional information directly in the file name. So your search functions identify it more easily. Or ideally you have a so sophisticated folder structure that you don't need any search functions because you know exactly where things are because you set up an appropriate folder structure following advice number three. The second part of this advice is that you need to use characters in file names or folder names that are somehow standard. So if your language has any kind of special characters, just don't use them in the file names or folder names, because if you need to send this file to someone or you move to a different computer or you try to open it with the, you know, the standard software tools, you can get these weird signs uh, instead of the special characters and uh, that is just generally causing problems. In addition, you should not use the space character or you should not have a blank space in your file name or folder name. This is generally not a problem in Windows, but if you do any kind of data analysis, having a space in the file names or folder names, which inevitably are included in any path variables. Well, these spaces can mess up your future scripts big time. So just avoid them. Really what you can do is use underscores or you can use camel case or anything like that, but spaces. Spaces are bad for file names and folder names. And the number five, comment everything excessively. If you write any kind of a script, make sure you are using a lot of comments and you are describing what are you doing while you are doing it. Because when you come back to this file in the future, it will be very, very helpful for yourself to read your own comments and yeah, just basically get back into the mindset we, you were in while you were writing these uh, scripts or any kind of well, data analysis workflows. Also, if you're not writing scripts per se, you could just open a, a new text file or a document or, and just describe the workflow that you are doing. Again, the purpose is the same. In the future, when you come back to this place and can come back to this project, just reading through this workflow or re reading through these comments of yours helps you to get back into the mindset or get back to the thinking process that you were in while you were doing that particular project. And because I promised you that patience pays off, here is tip number six. Well, this bonus tip is that you should be consistent in your working habits. From my experience, following these five tips that I just gave you really pays off. But I am also certain there will be a time when you would think that, oh, I will do just this quick analysis and I implement this temporary solution and I might not name a file appropriately and just put it on my desktop really quickly because I just need to do this analysis right now. And then I will change it to my proper system and these kinds of thoughts. Now, what will most likely happen that this temporary solutions becomes quite permanent 
And if it repeats on more than one occasion, the full system is somehow, what's the word, compromised. So if you set your foot onto this path of organizing your workflows and organizing your work life, just do it consistently all the time. Thank you for staying until end of the video. I hope it was useful for you. If you found it really useful, please share it with your colleagues and friends because it really helps out the channel. And as always, thank you for your time and have a very nice day.